What's up, you guys? Welcome to the April 16th edition of NBA 3-Ball, presented by Establish the Run. I'm your host, Mike Gallagher. Getting ready to break down a really light Thursday, and we'll hit a lot of injury news to kick this off. We'll go a little deeper with the light slate, so we're going 10 minutes. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe, please. And starting with the news, we've got Zach Levine out for health and safety protocols, according to Shams Sharania. 10 to 14 days, so reading between the lines on that, that means he tested positive, because it takes 10 days to get cleared. Then you have to do two days of ramping up, so he's out for basically two weeks. Yikes. Uh, not great for a team that was really struggling. And after the game last time, Billy Donovan, was, he went really kind of in on his team and how they just have to play desperate all the time. And when they play, they're not good enough to play desperate. He, he had a really interesting kind of almost like a shot at Kobe White. It wasn't like a shot shot. But he talked about how Kobe White was, like, wanting to be himself versus being, like, a point guard, which basically tells you, like, he's not ready for him to be a point guard. Uh, he hasn't been able to shift into that role yet. So, um, and matchup-wise, I think Troy Brown is going to start because these two teams just played, and Troy Brown was the main defender for John Morant. So I would expect that to be the case again here. So, yeah, him, Garrett Temple may still be on a minutes cap as well. They are on a back-to-back, so that's really noteworthy for somebody like Temple coming off a soft tissue injury, so he'll benefit. Denzel Valentine kind of saw some spots where he was closing in the last game. He'll probably get more playing time as well. And then also Vooch and Sadoransky get a nice little boost. 83-minute sample for Vooch with Sato. Sato is 12, 3, and 12 assists, where 106 minutes, uh, Vooch is 29, 11, and 3. Not a great matchup against Valachunas, but... Yeah, uh, a lot of value to go around. Certainly think Kobe White would benefit here. I mean, he has to. This team's going to need perimeter offense. So I, I think he's, you know, I told him, like, drop him for sure. I wouldn't, like, run to pick him up. But, you know what, it's 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 against a kind of a good defense in Memphis. I think it could be okay. But um, yeah, I just want to see what happens back-to-back as well. So if you want to pick him up, play the back-to-back, and then go from there. I think that makes a lot of sense. Moving to the Raptors against the Magic. Whoo-wee. Uh, quite the injury report. Kyle Lowry's out. Siakam's out. OG's out. Jalen Harris is out. Gary Trent Jr. is doubtful. And DeAndre Bembry is doubtful. So, I think the starting lineup's going to be Malachi Flynn. Fred Van Vliet, who should return, was cleared. Got through the suspension he already did on, in the last game. So, I think he starts. Uh, Yuta Wananabe, I think, starts at the 3. Then we got Chris Boucher at the 4. We'll talk about that in a second. And Ken Birch at the 5. And Nurse, he had some really great quotes uh, regarding the front court, said he liked the big unit, uh, not Randy Johnson. That uh, it was it was organized. He said he kind of liked how they rebounded really well. He liked how he had Ken Birch and Freddie Gillespie basically being the uh, the centers, while Boucher was the four man. And interestingly, here Nurse said that Boucher quote has to be a four, and um, he, they found that out this year. So that's interesting. So did he say that knowing that everyone was sitting here? And is that going to continue? So either way, when guys are back, like I don't really feel all that great uh, about Chris Boucher. But maybe they just sit everyone. They do play Oklahoma City on Sunday. So they certainly, I mean, the opponent matters here. Like for them to keep all these dudes out in the non-back-to-back. I mean, that speaks pretty big volumes that they're tanking here. So that's bad. Um, they, you are nervous here. Especially if you have, if you have like the borderline guys like, Gary Trent's kind of a drop right now because after Friday, they get Sunday OKC. Then they don't play till Wednesday. Then they don't play again till Saturday. Two-game week. That's They're not helping you. They're like Those borderline, even Trent's been awesome. But like two games of Gary Trent with an injury, like he's droppable if you really need to make some hay because I don't think he's going to play uh, on Sunday either. So uh, that's interesting. So I think Ken Burch, revenge game. Uh, also said that uh, Orlando, quote, put him in a box. So he has a really nice revenge narrative here against Wendell Carter Jr. I think that would be a good matchup for him. Fred Van Vliet has really good numbers without Siakam and Lowry, so expect him to be pretty busy. And, yeah, it's, it's uh, Malachi Flynn just keeps getting opportunities here. So we'll see what happens with those guys. Uh, mostly bench unit of Rodney Hood, little Stanley Johnson. Uh, but, but it's... Uh, it's, it's, this is rough. This is crazy. Pistons are also really sitting a lot of guys today. Front end of the back-to-back. No Dennis Smith Jr., no Mason Plumlee. 
No Rodney Magruder, no Wayne Ellington, Jeremy Grant, Corey Joseph. Like, whoa, boy. So I'm thinking the starters are going to be Saban Lee. Maybe it's Killian. Hamadou Diallo, Jaden Revenge Game. Josh Jackson, Sadiq Bey, and Isaiah Stewart. The easy part is, like, you're playing Isaiah Stewart all day against the OKC defense. Like, oh, my God. You have to put Isaiah Stewart in all your DFS lineups. Pick him up, play him today. But, yeah. Um, other than that, Diallo Revenge Game I think should be fun. He'll probably see... Uh, a little bit of Mr. Lou Dort, so it may be a little limiting for him there. Um, Josh Jackson should play a pretty good bet. Certainly, Sadiq Bey is going to be chucking here uh, in a really good matchup for him, so I think he'll be really productive. I think Killian's minutes will come up. Dwayne Casey was basically saying, hey, we'll let him play through everything. We don't care. Uh, he likes his playmaking and everything like that, learn through his mistakes, so on and so on. So I think Killian could be in a pretty decent spot here as well. Let's get to the basketball action here, and Giannis is back for the Bucks to get the win. In Atlanta, 25 minutes, certainly managed there. I spent this, said this yesterday. Uh, you know, he'll probably take a little bit, may not even get up to those mid-30s that we saw, kind of uncharacteristically. So uh, that was nice to see that he was back. Obviously, you know, we saw Middleton kind of struggle today. Drew Holiday kind of came, came on late. A little upside off those guys. Certainly Bobby Portis is going to trend down. Pat Conson still will trend down as well. Uh, we saw Jeff Teague and Bryn Forbes step up a little bit without Dante DiVincenzo. Certainly think that was back-to-back related, so I wouldn't really read into anything if you're looking for a pickup on that. Hawks dropped this one. Trey Young returns from that calf contusion. Struggle. Drew Holiday locked him down. Rough game from him. Bogdan Bogdanovich, man. He is playing like a top 10 fantasy guy right now for a season-long 9-cat. Just making everything. Just open all the time. McMillan just feeding this dude, man. So he is just league-winning status right now for how he's playing. Capella certainly was good. Nothing new there. Solomon Hill had another pretty productive game as well. Uh, we still don't have John Collins back. No DeAndre Hunter for a little bit. So, yeah, uh, he's not going to be a guy you're going to rely on. But, you know, maybe a cheap punt. I think he could kind of be on the radar. Warriors get another easy win. Steph Curry got er- going early inside the paint and then had a couple nice threes late in this one. Kevon Looney, 28 minutes. More than we thought again. Uh, even some garbage time factored into that one, too. So, the 25-minute thing Kirk keeps talking about apparently isn't true because uh, they're playing Looney a lot. He's been pretty good. And Wiggins had a pretty productive game. Kent Bazemore took a step back. Uh, off the bench, it was really uh, Juan Toscano Anderson, career-high 20 points, easy buckets all night from him. They got a game coming up on Saturday. I think he'll be all right. Um, we obviously know that Ubrez may or may not play. That would certainly affect Toscano Anderson. But, yeah, he got ruled out pretty early here, so I think maybe Uber needs another one. Don't really have anything with the Cavs. We saw Larry Nance play a little bit more. Didn't play great again. So I would try to hang on to him. But if you really need to make moves, your league's not too deep. You can certainly move on there if you want. Kevin Love has been healthy. Uh, Isaac Okoro's playing a ton. Obviously, the guards are kind of rolling here. Garland struggled with the shot, but really active. And Colin Sexton was super aggressive. Was confident with shooting jumpers all night. Suns get the win. Nothing to say. I mean, Chris Paul was magnificent. DeAndre Ayton is playing really well. Nice bounce back game from Mikel Bridges. No surprise. Uh, yeah, Suns are good. Kings played this one pretty tight. Headline here, De'Aaron Fox plays 40 minutes. Uh, and Hassan Whiteside uh, had a pretty good game. Wasn't very good defensively, but rebounded well. Yeah, I mean, he's the guy. It's very clear right now. Damian Jones started and it was pulled after five minutes and that was a wrap. So yeah, it looks like Whiteside is the guy. Celtics get the win, and they won by eight, but it should have been a lot bigger. About a 20-point garbage time blown lead here. Uh, so they had to go the starters back in. That got Jalen Brown to a 40 ball, just cooking. 17-20, to 20, easy shots. He's so good when he's on, and he's on. Uh, nothing to say. Tr- Tristan Thompson was great in the start. Robert Williams did not play for swelling in his knee. Sounds It's going to be day-to-day. Maybe one more, maybe two more. We'll see. Certainly they're going to be careful. Don't forget, they were careful with him all season because they wanted him to be healthy. So I do think he misses another one. Uh, and Mo, Va- uh, Mo Wagner was not good. While the co- Green Cornet, uh, Luke Cornet was pretty good. Four blocks, defended well. Closed out, actually, over Tristan Thompson with the starters. So I think Cornet could be a sneaky guy. Nothing to say on the Lakers, really. No Andre Drummond. He was probable, didn't play. Marquise Morris didn't play. They, sound, they should be back for the next one. There's nothing really to say here. To the ads page, going to do a mixture of guys from tonight. Juan Toscano Anderson, I think he was awesome. I think he'll earn playing time from over Kent Bazemore, even Kelly Oubre maybe when he comes back. Kevon Looney playing upper 20s is going to make him low end valuable. More of a stream, but I think he's solid. Uh, Tristan Thompson, definitely a decent pickup until Robert Williams gets back. Thought DeLon Wright played really well. And then Luke Cornett, like I mentioned, was pretty good. Uh, guys for tomorrow, Ken Birch, I love him today. 
I uh, like Taj Gibson, but no one's Noel banged up. Didn't talk about the LaMarcus Aldrich retirement that was on the three-man, so check that out. Uh, but yeah, DeAndre Jordan, Nick Claxton, it's narrowed down there. Sadiq Bey, Hamadou Diallo, Killian Hayes in that order, and then Freddie Gillespie as well uh, as the backup big man. So you guys take care. Enjoy your weekend.